So obviously I made it to my final destination, uh, finally. It was quite the adventure, but I did get a souvenir, a lovely re, uh, railroad nail, because I know it's not a railroad tie, whatever it is. These are laying all over the tracks, guys. Like, why aren't they hammering them back in? I don't know, but there's they're just everywhere. And you can see them sticking up from the tracks, so whatever, Amtrak. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Um... I'm doing this video though because I am going to be starting a, a new book that I think that um, there might be people out there who are interested in also participating in this book, uh, which is an initiation. I don't know if you can see the cover, but I will put the cover on um, the as the cover of the video. But the book is called The uh, Sophia Code, A Living Transmission from the Sophia Dragon Tribe. The author is Kaia Ra. It's spelled K-A-I-A -A and then R-A. Um, I'm going to read. go ahead and read a, the preface parts of this book. Um, because it is an initiation, uh, and a code and downloads, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, um, a study which requires some things. And, um, so I'm not going to be reading it on YouTube or anything like that. I'm just doing this video to see if there's anybody else who would like to participate. Um, and then it's going to main be maintained as a closed group. Uh, so anyway, here we go. Let me read a little bit about like who the author is and how the book came about. I think it's a fascinating introduction to this whole book, which really fell into my lap, honestly. Um, thank you, whoever Ted is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so... Let me go ahead and read that. You guys do your own research. If you're interested in participating, leave your content, leave, you know, whatever. Say something in the comments, and I'll reach out to you, and um, we'll figure out how, how we can do this together. So it, it is recommended that the book be read aloud to each other. Um, I, I don't know if this is just for women or not. But let's just see how who feels so inspired to after I read the introduction. So anyway, here we go. <laughs> the book was written in uh, 2016. And like I said, it is an initiation, but let me tell you more about it. Here's the preface, The Great Commission. I met Sophia on a snowy December night in 2009 while living at the base of Mount Shasta in Northern California. My guides had asked me to relocate to the mountain and start channeling a book for the Ascended Masters. Following through on the request, I left behind a Kinetic Bay area lifestyle and, and sequestered myself away in the eerie silence of Mount Shasta for a writer's sabbatical. To ensure an uninterrupted flow of creativity, I maintained a disciplined daily routine of winter chores and channeled writing. It was a chop wood, carry water approach that kept me solely focused upon the project. Every day at the same set hours, I sat with my, sat with my computer by an altar that I had created in the living room. Listening to an individual archangels or ascended masters speak, I would then type what I was instructed to write. This happened every day for the first month, just as I had planned. As a professional channel who has been practicing for many years, all of this felt relatively ordinary for me. The night that I met Sophia was no different from my routine schedule. I finished eating dinner by the fireplace, washed the dishes, and went to sit for the next round of writing. The Tahoe-style home that I rented had a high vaulted ceiling in the living room and thick, exposed wooden beams throughout the house. 
It was solidly built to withstand the Shasta winters. Yet on that night, just as I began to write, those wooden beams started to vibrate. I gaped as their sturdy appearance rapidly de dematerialized into an underlying atomic structure. Instead of grooved dark wood, I was staring at orbiting electrons. The walls began to vibrate as well, followed by the entire house, which felt as though it was shaking from its foundation and about to either completely melt down or lift off. I couldn't tell which way the energy was moving because it was accelerating in multiple directions simultaneously. A great white light filled the living room and then the entire house. I could still see my physical body and the computer perched on my lap, but the rest of the, my environment suddenly disappeared. I was sitting in pure light. A voice now boomed from this all-consuming white light, which smelled and felt like lightning, clear, electrifying every cell of my body. The voice declared, I am Sophia, the one divine mother creatrix of all life. Are you listening to me? Her voice was thunderously loud and the volume was unbearable for me. This was far beyond any previous experience of channeling that I had. I gra grappled to find my own voice and respond to her question. My mind raced through several approaches for nav navigating the situation until I finally decided to humble Humbly admit my adject confusion. Sophia, are you the Greek goddess of wisdom? I hesitantly called out into her light. No, I am Sophia, the one divine mother creatrix of all life. Are you listening to me? Her response ro rolled throughout my entire being in another round of thunderous light waves. With this response, I realized that the very light of God was summoning me beyond my understanding. Regardless of my shock, I wanted to be wholly available for this extraordinary moment. Yet I knew several factors needed to shift if I were to remain a conscious participant speaking with Sophia. At that time, I was barely calibrated for this level of direct engagement with her. I felt that humbly admitting my limitations was the best way to proceed. Yes, I am listening to you. I want to hear everything that you have to say, but can you turn down the volume and the lights? It's unbearable for me. I offered back into her luminosity. The pure white light immediately softened to include a mixture of golden light and was easier on my sight. The all-consuming light receded in such a way that I could see outlined elements of the living room once again. And while remaining with in Sophia's centralized field of light. I looked down at my laptop and realized that I should immediately start typing to record my conversation with Sophia to avoid convincing myself later that this never happened. With my rapt attention, Sophia's voice softened as well. She spoke to me about my topics, many topics related to the sovereignty of humanity. I noticed that every time Sophia said the word sovereignty, it rang as church bells throughout my entire being, summoning me. Although I hardly grasped the depth of Sophia's transmission at that time, she blazed the word sovereignty as a holy fire within my mind. Her all-consuming ocean of divine love for humanity was expressed within this single word of sovereignty, and I was overcome by it. Sophia then, Sophia then asked me to write a book. She called it her love letter to humanity, a book that would help us love ourselves again by reclaiming our sovereign divinity. I had absolutely no idea what I was getting myself into, but I was so moved by her declaration of love that I, that I immediately said yes anyway. With my agreement, Sophia invited me to meet her high council of ascended master teachers who were experts on sovereignty. She revealed that much of what I would write would be their direct teachings on Sophia Christ consciousness. Sophia's golden white light then arranged itself to appear as a temple in which I beheld thousands of faces, ascended masters from across the cosmos, whom were members of her high council. Some were instantly recognizable to me, such as Jesus, Mother Mary, and Mahavatar Babahi. Many others hailed from an interstellar community that I was yet to meet. Particularly riveting was the appearance of the Serifiel 
spiraling within Sophia's central field of light as a DNA helix of two magnificent, pearlescent, white Sophia dragons. The core group of recognizable divine feminine ascended masters then stepped forward to greet me. I would eventually understand that they were the first key code mentors of the Sophia Code cosmology to re be revealed in this introductory volume. Each of these key codes were already directly mentoring and initiating me in my daily life, and I saw how their initiations were purposely overlapping to prepare me for this moment of revelation. I was nearing my limit for how much longer I could remain calibrated to consciously dialogue in this all-consuming light of Sophia, but she was not finished with our conversation yet. Sophia had one final commission to charge me with. She asked that I call this Ascended Master High Council the Sophia Dragon Tribe. I silently gulped my way through this final piece of unexpected news. I wondered how on earth is is I wondered who on earth is going to take me seriously with a name like that. Not to mention how many people are afraid of dragons, I thought. I felt my professional life flash before my eyes in a fleeting moment of despair yet once again. I said to Sophia, Beyond my understanding, I committed to publicly teach about this High Council as the Oracle for the Sophia Dragon Tribe. With all the details of this great commission settled up and agreed upon, I witnessed the final blessings and benediction of the High Council come to a close. The light of Sophia slowly receded and integrated into my now reappearing living room. I watched as the appearance of walls climbed up from the floor to, to recreate the vaulted ceiling high above me. The great commission that I had agreed to serve was now a sealed promise within the light of Sophia, and it would take me years to catch up with a prayer of this magnitude. Shortly thereafter, I became aware of Gnostic Christianity and its mystical belief systems, including that of Sophia as the Bride of Christ. Most of what I read from the ancient text was cryptic at best and hardly conveyed to me the omnipotent, om, omnis, omniscient Sophia that had announced herself as the one divine mother make creatrix of all life. I realized that Sophia was asking for me to plainly relay who she was through her own words as a sacred text that would reconcile humanity with the divine feminine Christ energies that had been secreted away and oppressed for ages, secreted. With the recognition that I would not find what I was looking for to corroborate my waking revelation of Sophia from any previously written scripture, I committed to remaining an initiate of the unknown before me and directly downloading the teachings of Sophia and the Sophia Dragon Tribe without relying on any external reference. I dedicated myself to the testing ground for every teaching that poured through me. My daily life became a rigorous modern mystery school in which every choice I made was in some way connected to this project. Eventually I was told the name of the book, The Sophia Code. The Great Commission to channel the Sophia Code came at a pivotal moment in my personal life during which I fought every day to simply get through the day, as I put back together the countless pieces of my shattered heart. As the Codex teachings flowed through my channel, I, was t I got to witness that this was indeed a living transmission from Sophia and the, and the Ascended Masters, which was capable of healing the darkest wounds and activating the greatest light within me. To provide some personal background, I will share that I was born in a relatively spiritually awakened state, with multiple lifetimes of mystery school training consciously intact, my, my psychic centers already activated, and a magnetic creative intelligence that both captivated and, and infuriated adults. By the age of three, I was conversing with guardian angels and masters of light that watched over me, yet I was also hounded by the demonic entities ancestors, and ghosts that plagued my caretakers. I was beaten when I would speak of what I saw or heard beyond the veils, so I spent most of my early years in utter silence, not relaying what I experienced of these gifts that would also become a curse during this chapter of my life. 
I, my constant interaction with the spirit world allowed for me to live most of my early life on the other side of physical reality, surviving in the higher light realms, as my body suffered atrocities within this world of form. For when Sophia contacted me on that wintry night, I was in the middle of an excruciating, excruciatingly personal healing journey. Having survived the first 18 years of my life, I was recovering from being systematically raped and brutally tortured on a daily basis by both my caretakers and countless others. From my birth, I was groomed to be inducted at the age of three into a child rape slave trade for an elite ruling class whose network crossed six state lines, including all of New England, New York, and Washington, D.C., this slave trade exchanged child trafficking for political power, real estate, and millions of dollars, as well as supplying child slaves for the highest tiers of satanic, masonic ceremonies of ritual rape and torture in the United States. This elite network in included politicians, military officials, wealthy businessmen, as well as an entire system of medical professionals, who believed that raping children provided them with a vital life source for achieving immortality, remaining in power, and ensuring the future of their generational rule. In this journey, I witnessed the murder and raping of innumerable other children as well. At their hands, I survived multiple surgeries, comas, and at least 13 death experiences in which I was carried into the light realms far beyond this world. My first experience of dying due to this insane brutality occurred at the age of four in New Hampshire. My psychic centers and intelligence were plundered for these purposes and this extreme extremity of torture left me without any boundaries to the spirit world. It was by the grace of Sophia, the angels, and the ascended masters that I survived every attempt upon my life. However, by the time I escaped, I walked as the living dead for several years. It was also by the grace of Sophia that my own attempts to end my life in those early years followed my, following my escape were unsuccessful. It would take all of my 20s and most of my 30s to recover from these atrocities and become the integrated whole human being that I am today. By 2001, I managed to graduate with honors with a bachelor's degree while working full-time, creating a foundation for my future. Through a divinely orchestrated series of synchronicities, I discovered that I could train my ocular gifts to be helpful for others and myself. I was always in awe that although my heart was broken, my channel was pure. Helping others with the information and healing that I could download from the source, regardless of my condition, built a confidence in myself that had been almost annihilated. Professionally, I went on to serve, activate, and mentor an international clientele and countless communities. I wrestled most of my life with this decision to go public about my personal journey of recovery, including writing about it in this preface. I decided to share my story because I want the whole world to know that we can heal from anything with the power of our higher selves flowing through us. I call God Sophia. Which, what, but whatever you call God has the power to heal your life and everything that you survived. My prayer is that in the embodiment of my courage, courageous recovery and activating the Sophia Code within me, you will be inspired to take courage to do the same. And we are here to save a planet. This is not some ordinary lifetime to play small. We came here to embody our magnificence. This includes owning the heroic feats of what we are willing to heal and empower within ourselves as an example to all of humanity of, which, of what is possible in this divine feminine Christ movement. Channeling the, this sacred codex accelerated for me what would have taken the rest of my life to recover from, to occur within only seven years. After about three years of channeling information for the Sophia Code, I started to notice that I, I was anchoring and embodying the, the frequency flowing through me. 
This helped me understand that the Sophia Code was an ocular, was an oracular uh, living transmission that I could broadcast to the world through the vehicle of my form. I know that for those whom this codex is meant for, this living transmission can support your higher self, self embodiment for healing, integrating, and dissolving the deepest wounds within you. Further, the Sophia Code is here to support your highest potential for living a heaven on earth reality in which you, in which what you pray for creates miracles and blessings for yourself, all of humanity, and Mother Earth. The frequency of this transmission is set to bless your life and divine purpose with a resonance that activates a soul remembrance for how worthy you are to thrive in every area of your life. Sophia's medicine of the Divine Feminine Christ is here to heal our hearts from the seemingly unforgivable. Her presence is guiding us in how to rise as one golden dragon of light for awakening the heart of our humanity by taking refuge in our undefending love, invincible innocence, and unconditional compassion. In the grace of Sophia, we are being initiated to step into our sovereign ability to create heaven on earth by embodying the frequency of our divinity, one loving step at a time. I had no idea how much I needed the medicine of the Divine Feminine Christ for my personal recovery until each of these key codes walked me through their initiations that are featured in this book. In their loving mentorship, I transcended surviving my life to thriving in my relationship with life, and may it be so for you as well. Over the journey of channeling the Sophia Code, the thousand pieces of my heart became whole. May the radiant light of Sophia's all-consuming love for you, pouring through every page of this book, set your heart free to fly in the vista of your own sovereign divinity. We are here to birth miracles. We are here to download divine solutions. We are here to honor our divinity and to take pride in our great calling to activate humanity. We may, may we complete our prophecies together and fulfill this great commission before us for the one body of Sophia Christ, with every blessing for your happiness in her radiance. Kaiyak Ra. I then want to read the introduction, which is how to read the codex, and I think that you will understand better why this uh, is an initiation, why it is a code download, and why it it is really something that needs to be done in a closed group or between you and another person. However you guys want to do it um, for yourselves, I know that there are people that I would like to see be involved in this as a community. So, introduction, how to read the codex. As a sacred text, this book is encoded to broadcast a living transmission that aligns you with the truth and frequency of your higher self-consciousness. It also acts as a living doorway through which you may be initiated into a modern-day mystery school lineage with the Ascended Masters. Therefore, you may experience a myriad of physical sensations as you rearrange your inner reality by reading this book. The Sophia Code is a curriculum at, with the Ascended Masters designed to activate your highest potential and your soul's divine genome. As in an arc of educational growth, cycles of integration are essential for taking in new information, releasing old belief systems, and adjusting to live at the edge of your capacity for accelerated personal transformation. Allowing yourself the space to reflect and integrate between chapters from one to several days will support your journey ahead. However, it is also important to keep reading as you integrate because each chapter builds momentum for your empowerment. In Section 2, this pace and commitment becomes particularly important for every key code chapter contains revelatory teachings, followed by an initiation to mentor with the Ascended Master, which builds upon the previous key code initiations. About the key code initiations. 
The key code initiations in Section 2 are designed as Divine Feminine Christ blueprints for self-initiating your spiritual awakening and activating personal mastery. The initiations are written in the first-person perspective so that you may read them aloud in front of a mirror, at an altar, or in a sacred space. Using the power of your own voice to command the activations within these initiations awakens your awareness to the sovereign creator within you. The key code initiations were designed to build upon one another in a sequential order, and it is recommended that you read them in this way the first time. However, once you have journeyed with all eight Ascended Master Key Code mentors, you may return to any initiation in any order to receive next level downloads from their activations. Here are some ceremonial ideas to support your initiations. Connect and ground with the earth before and after your initiation. Pray over a glass of water to sip on as you read the initiation aloud and ask your higher self to bless the water for your in integration. Speak the initiation in front of a mirror, at an altar, or inside a medicine wheel to amplify the activations. Light a candle to focus your attention and assist your transformation with the element of fire. Burn a stick of incense or use essential oils to shift into your right brain receptivity. Play ambient music re with that relaxes and inspires you to let go. Read the initiation aloud with a friend, taking turns in activating one another through the power of your voice. Listen to the recorded initiations as you fall asleep to bypass unconscious resistance for integrating these powerful activations. All right, so pretty amazing, intense stuff, right? I um, <laughs> I guess I could take these off. I just was amazed how this book came about for me, how uh, just everything that it had to say, the timing, just it's all amazing. I really hope that... Um, there are people who stuck through and listened to the whole video and who decided to go on this journey with me. Again, the book title is The Sophia Code, A Living Transmission from the Sophia Dragon Tribe. The author is Kaia, K-A-I-A, Ra, R-A. And we'll all be talking to you again soon. Much love. Off. Oh.